Hi, I'm Rick Martinez. Welcome to Sweetwater Organic Community Farm. Uh, I'm going to talk today about growing your own food and your garden at home. Uh, some of the most important things to keep in mind would be your growing season. Uh, when does it begin? When does it end? Uh, what is your spring and fall crops? And usually your local extension service can provide you uh, a seasonal planting guide, which will, will be very helpful. But some of the most important things to remember is that when you're growing an organic garden, really the, what we are growing is we are growing healthy soil. We're not feeding the plants, we're feeding the soil. And the soil is what feeds the plants. Uh, much as in our own bodies where we eat our food, it does not go directly into our veins. It goes through a system of enzymes and processes that break it down. And the same thing happens to the soil. So that's the biggest key of, of advice I'm gonna give you is is really think about growing healthy soil. Also, it's important to have adequate sun. So when you're picking a, sp a, a, a spot for your garden, you know, look at the sun. What does it look like in the morning, midday, in the evening? And try and pick a spot that has um, a good amount of sun. And then you'll learn later through experience which plants have the, the highest sun demands and which can tolerate a little bit of shade. To get started, you probably have grass or something else there growing at the moment. So you'll, you'll want to get rid of that. And a, a good way to do it is to put some plastic down, uh, put some bricks around the edges, and, and uh, it'll sort of smother that grass and it'll make it a lot easier to dig up. And then after that, you'll, you'll want to probably increase the organic matter. And you can do that by putting uh, some layers of leaves, grass clippings, and even some good compost, or maybe even purchased compost down. And um, uh, they, there are some books that talk about lasagna, uh, uh, lasagna layering in the garden. So you can think of it like that. You can put down different layers of leaves and, and maybe even paper, newspaper, as a weed barrier that'll inhibit the weeds from coming up right away and then layer it with different layers of leaves and compost and maybe even some soil on top and, uh, and let that kind of sit for a few days, maybe a week even, and uh, decompose a little bit. And then, uh, then I think you'll be ready to start uh, selecting your plants for whatever particular season. But uh, again, getting back to the live soil, I think we need to think of our, of our gardens as an ecosystem in itself. And you can um, look around where you live and see how things grow, how, how some things will benefit from an association with other plants. And you try and mimic that. You can have higher plants that grow up high. For instance, tomatoes and eggplant grow up taller. And then under that, you can, uh, in between the rows, you can place some, some uh, smaller plants that can benefit from a, a little bit of the shade during the day from those taller plants. And those are understory plants. And so, so just look around and start mimicking what nature does, except we're gonna kind of help it along by selecting what plants we wanna plant and uh, what foods we wanna eat. Um, the, a couple of other important items are water. What is your water source? Uh, does it have chemicals in it? If it's a potable source, do you wanna try and get some of the chemicals out? If it comes from municipal or do you have a well? And then also when you're grouping your plants, it's important to try and group them in similar water needs. So plants that, that need less water, such as rosemary and oregano um, you might, and tomatoes and those sort of things, you may wanna group them together in one portion of the garden where they have less water needs. Uh, a lot of the squashes and things also uh, are, tend to get fungus. So, so they might work better on drip. So you can kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about is group your plants and, and sections where there's less water needs and maybe sections where they might want drip. And then another section of your garden that, that has a little higher water needs and likes to get wet. For instance, all the lettuce families um, like to have water sprayed on them directly. Okay, so, so we've talked a little bit about sun. We've talked a little bit about water and planting seasons. And, and one of the next big uh, um, categories of information would be pests. What kind of pests do you have? How do you control them? 
What plants do they thrive on? So we have the fortune of being in the Google uh, society. So we can Google just about anything we want about any kind of pest and you'll find it very easily. Uh, the first thing is to really identify the pest. So if you've got some sort of pest problem, we don't want to take the old chemical approach of just going out and getting a bunch of poison and just spraying it out there. The, um, the more organic approach really is to, is to identify the pest and find the least toxic way of controlling that pest. For instance, for most worms, you can get something that's a, a biological control called Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short. And it's very low toxicity, if any, it really is a virus for worms, and, um, but it's not a poison. So when you apply it, they actually have to consume the Bacillus thuringiensis for, uh, th for it to be effective. So you don't want to spray it on there and then water your plants because it'll rinse it off. Or you don't want to spray Bacillus thuringiensis, BT, uh, the day before it rains, for instance. So that's just one example of how we would approach our pest control. Um, some of the tougher ones to, uh, to take care of are flea beetles uh, and stink bugs. And they're the bugs that have the harder shells. And uh, so therefore, they are a little bit more protected to, to some of the less toxic um, uh, organic pesticides that we might use. So really do your research, find the bug, catch one, go to the internet, ask other gardeners, what is this? And, and see if you could determine exactly what the bug is and what the damage it's doing. The other thing is when you're out working in your garden, when you're out weeding, which we haven't talked about yet, or you're out watering, you really should use all of your time in the garden as a monitoring time where you're observing, you're looking for changes in your garden. And one of those changes might be new munchings, uh, pests uh, taking part of your, of your harvest are eating part of the leaves. And they also will leave droppings. So when you're out working and, and caring for your plants, just keep your eyes open. Be very observant for any signs of pests, generally fresh chewing or puncturing, as well as, as droppings. Um, also, another important area, and I kind of group it with pests, are weeds. And, and weeds are just plants in a place where that we don't want them. They're misunderstood plants. And so it's important when planting your garden as well to, um, to try and, and plan to prevent weeds. You never should let your garden go fallow, completely void of, of plants. Even in the off season, you should plant some kind of cover crop and that breaks the weed cycle. Cover crops also break the pest cycle. So we're looking to break those cycles as a preventative way of controlling pests and weeds. So, so that's really the approach of the ecosystem is think about the cycles that you have and how you're gonna work with those cycles or break those cycles to achieve your desired effect. So again, with pests and with weeds, we wanna think about breaking the cycles. So with weeds, how, how would we do that? We wanna interrupt the seeding uh, phase of the pests, of the, uh, of the weeds. So don't ever let any of your undesirable weeds go to seed because you're just encouraging the next crop of weeds for your subsequent garden. And the same with, with pests. You wanna make sure you control them before they become an infestation. Often, if they've gotten out of control, you're better off just ripping up the entire crop and getting rid of the pests, removing them from the garden before they have a chance to multiply and, and leave their eggs or whatever they do into the soil for your subsequent gardens. So th those are two very important concepts for, for dealing with pests and dealing with weeds. Another thing that we can do for weeds, as we spoke a little earlier about putting newspapers or cardboard, it's a very common technique. It, it serves as a barrier, yet when it gets wet, it starts to break down and it, it will retain moisture. It will um, uh, become organic matter that will eventually improve the fertility of your soil. So one thing we haven't talked about is seeds. 
when you're getting your seeds for the organic garden, you definitely want a preference for organic seeds. But um, many varieties of crops that we pl plant, uh, of foods we want to grow, may not have those seeds available in organic form. So um, Google the internet, there's plenty of seed companies available. Uh, if you cannot find the variety you want in, in an organic seed, just make sure that the seed is not treated with any chemicals and that it's not gen genetically modified. Those are the two things that uh, the organic uh, rules disallow. So, um, and it's very easy to do. Uh, contact the seed company, uh, get a statement from them in writing that they were not genetically modified, find out what their seed treatments are, if any, and, uh, and just avoid any of the chemical seed treatments. Uh, so that really has given you a little bit of the basics uh, for starting a garden uh, in your area. And the best thing to do is to talk to other gardeners. You'll learn more from your neighboring gardeners than you will from anyone else. Good luck.